Hello folks, I'm Ed Overstreet having all kinds of problems trying to get uh, the technical side of them going on YouTube sorted out. It's not YouTube, it's uh, me and and it's just not working right. And it's me, that's not working right. But at any rate, I'm going to see if I can't make this work by manually uh, moving from screen to screen. Right now though, we're going to uh, have to uh, in, endure my introduction and then we'll be heading outside. Okay, successful. Voila. Uh, this is the. Uh, well, let me do this. Let me uh, show you what's going on. I'll bring up my outside camera, and that should show. Uh, let me connect us. We aren't connected outside. They logged me off, and we are now. Uh, right now, this telescope system right here is on LBN 581. It's a really cool region of the sky that's got some intense nebulosity and uh, so I'm imaging that and I'll show you some of the images that are coming in. I, I started at about I started about nine uh, kind of early it was kind of low on the horizon but I went ahead we're having some clear skies and cat we're going to have like eight days of it if if the weather predictors uh, are are right and and that just wow that's like Christmas for, for an astro imager. And then uh, really low on the horizon are the planets Jupiter and Saturn and I forgot which one I'm on now. I think this is on, I don't know, Jupiter. And it may have drifted off of, it may have drifted off. We may have to go find it. But uh, at any rate, I haven't been paying a whole lot, of, whole lot of attention to this setup right here. So uh, this is where we are, and uh, the other night I was able to get 40 HA and 40 O3 and 40 S2 uh, uh, images, and uh, they're three minute long images, exposures, three minute exposures. So I'm in narrow band. I have a moon that I'm fighting with uh, later on uh, tonight and early in the morning, and it will uh, be lighting up uh, my neighborhood. In your neighborhood too, making it pretty much uh, impossible to image with a one-shot color camera or RGB. So um, I'm in narrow band, looking for narrow band targets over the next eight days that we have the clear skies, just because that's what I'm going to have to do to battle the moon. Of course, it's going to be ri rising later and later, and it'll be lesser a threat for uh, a good part of the evening, but. I might be able to get some LRGB imaging in later during these clear sky nights. But uh, right now, I'm kind of uh, backed in a corner. So, uh, and there's plenty of, um, there's plenty of emission nebula, nebula out there that I would prefer to image. And uh, so I'll be, um, I'll be dealing with those. All right, I got my fingers crossed. Let's head over to the other kit and see if we're, uh, well, look, good. We're on, uh, we're still there. <laughs> so we're at Jupiter, and uh, Jupiter is, uh, again, really low in the sky, maybe 18 degrees altitude. And uh, so I'm shooting over uh, a lot of, uh, well, actually, a pretty, actually, I'm not, uh, LBN 581 is over the city of Spartanburg. Uh, I'm in the suburbs, but... Uh, the lights, uh, the light still causes, as you well know, in your neck of the woods, probably the same thing I'm dealing with. I have about a 19.5 sky rating, and uh, and that's when there is no moon at about 3 o'clock in the morning, when uh, the lights are turned off in most neighborhoods, uh, and um, so that's when it's dialed down as far as it's going to go. So I'm a class six Bartle sky place anyway, and narrow band almost is a must in order to have some images with signal. And uh, I do everything, but uh, I don't knock it out of the park. Uh, I 
I struggled to get good data. So, uh, but that's life in America and life in a suburbia, and uh, I'm not moving again. I got clear sky. I mean, I have uh, unobstructed skies, 360 degrees. And when we lived on the other side of town, uh, that was not the case. We had more home to take care of than I felt like taking care of. And my wife and I are up in years, and so we had raised our kids. Didn't need pool. Didn't need hot tub. Didn't need big yard. Didn't need two stories. So we downsized, and my only request was, I want to be able to see the sky. Because where I did live before, I only could set up in the front yard. Uh, the backyard was just nothing but either trees, pool, pine islands, stuff, and, and there was no sky to see. Front yard, I had a window that was uh, very narrow, but I could get... Uh, uh, I could start in the northeast, and so you pick up a lot of targets there and follow them to the meridian, and then I was done. Uh, by the time I got to the meridian, I was moving into new uh, trees. So I was so glad to move and so glad to have the opportunity just to see stuff. And so imaging is, uh, it comes with its problems because of where I live, but at least I can see up and get my eyes on stuff that I couldn't before. So this is Jupiter, and uh, we're going to head over to, um, let's uh, stop this, and uh, let's see how difficult it is to uh, head over to uh, Saturn. Here we are. Let's just go up here and find Saturn. And let's salute to it. I'm in Cortez du Sil. I don't know how you pronounce it, and I'll never know how to pronounce it. And I've had people who do know how to pronounce it uh, help me try to pronounce it, and I still can't pronounce it. And so uh, French was never going to be a language I was going to be able to speak. All right, let me go back to uh, uh, start this up again. I use my, uh, it's a real handy thing to do. Uh, there's Saturn. I use my... Uh, uh, PhD 2 and my finder or my guide camera to uh, center my stuff. We're not too far off. So let's see, we want to go west, I think. Oh, I'm at three and a half seconds. Let's go down to uh, let's go down to half a second. And then we don't want to go west, but we want to go east. And right there, and I think south. Bingo. Whoop, too far. Let's go back. Hope I'm, uh, my, hope my guide scopes in sync with my uh, SCT. We're going to find out real quick. Oh, there it is. We're good, 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 good. Let's raise up the gain to. There we go. Raise up the gain to me. I don't want to go that high. We'll raise up exposure. Let's raise up the gain to 400 around that. And let's raise the exposure a little bit. That's 20 some frames per second. And now let's move it over and get our centered. And now we got to go this way. And, and let's guide. Let's keep it there. Yeah, we're centered. And uh, let's go up to guide at three seconds. And let's find the guide scar. It did. And let's see if it'll guide us along. Um, if if I'm imaging. <clears throat> Uh, if I am imaging, uh, I won't guide. During the time I'm taking, um, say, two, three, four, five thousand frames, I'll stop guiding. And the reason that if seeing as bad as it is tonight, the mount's going to send corrections, and this thing's going to be jumping as a result of the corrections that the mount's sending. I'll have less drift over a five thousand. <clears throat> 
second, um, 5,000 second, a 5,000 frame uh, <clears throat> AVI file at 20 frames per second, then I'll have stacking problems because I'm guiding, if that makes any sense. In other words, when I, when I image, I stop guiding. And when I leave this alone and I go over to another kit because running two kits at the same time is pretty easy, but if I get caught up with the other kit trying to um, make changes or add new targets and, and I don't, I'm not paying attention to this, <clears throat> at the focal length of, um, I'm at uh, 2,023 times, uh, two, I'm at 5,080 uh, millimeters focal, uh, focal length. And uh, tonight I'm using an ASI 533 color, one shot color camera. I am, I am, said Sam. And uh, so this image scale makes this a lot smaller than the ASI 224, but uh, the ASI 224 has given me uh, some issues. The other night, I, the other night I thought I had mount problems, and all the time I was having ASI 224 camera problems, uh, and I was changing cables on the mount. Uh, there it jumped as a result of uh, a pulse being set through the guiding. It went from here to there, and uh, so I try to keep that from happening when I'm imaging by just not guide. But I can leave this alone now, and guiding's going to keep it pretty well in place. And that's why it was where it was. I didn't realize I was guiding until I came down here and and saw it, because um, I was on Jupiter for a long time working with setting up that other scope. So let's go back over there, and we'll look at some of those pictures. Uh, let's get rid of the sequencer and this is LBN 581 and let's stretch it a little bit and I probably would be better served if I was taking five minute exposures 300 seconds rather than 180 but uh, the scene is bad and my guiding earlier was not really that good it's at 0.66 right now which is good it's fine with the wide field that's good that's good for me i don't i don't do much better than that ever anyway when the scene is excellent but when the scene isn't good um then this guide star is bouncing around doing uh, due to uh the atmospheric dispersion, uh, just uh, issues between my sensor and the star in, in the way of turbulence in the atmosphere. And the star is moving in my, my um, uh, software, sending uh, corrections to the mount to correct for uh, atmospheric dispersion. And, and, and the mount's doing its job. It doesn't need to send any corrections. It can't help the fact that the stars bouncing around so what happens is you get these graphs that look like seesaws where it's it's correcting and it's over correcting and it goes back and forth all because of seeing and uh, it's real frustrating because you think your mount has uh, lost its mind when it was just doing great the night before and you wonder what the heck have I have I bumped it did I uh, spill something on it? We're down to 44 now. The lowest I've ever guided for any length of time is in the 30s. And it wasn't very long. And I will tell you, I, I repeat myself, and I know if you've watched other live videos, what I do know from experience is that these two numbers right here, RA and DEC, if they're close, then your stars are really going to look good almost regardless of this value. Now, I say that it's relative, but if this value was 1.5, and I have an image scale of 2.32, so I, I could go up to 2.32 probably and, uh, and have that poor guiding. I could go up to my image scale just about and be okay. Uh, 
as long as these two numbers are close. But even if I was at, say, 1.0, and this number was twice this number, I'm not okay. One's not bad, but what's bad is these numbers uh, with a spread of like 2 to 1, because you're going to have oblong stars. I don't care how good your RMS is. If this is 10 and this is 40, you're going to have oblong stars, but yet you have a good RMS. So you want the, like 40, 40, big time good. Now this was, is it, for me, this is perfect. I'm in the 50s with my RMS and well, it just changed. And I had 44, or I had 40, RA and 40 deck. Well, if it stayed like that, I would have outstanding stars, but uh, it doesn't stay like that. And uh, so anyway, uh, let's go back. The only problem with this target, by the way, is not anything to do with uh, my neck of the woods uh, it has everything to do with my neck of the woods uh, because air I'm, I'm, I'm right in a flight uh, there you go I've got three well get away would you I've got uh, three images so far that I've taken no I got four images that I've taken and, and I got an airplane coming through that one I've got an airplane coming through that one Ah, got one down here. So this just happens to be uh, where we aren't. We're, we're pretty close, about 15 minutes. Uh, if there's no traffic lights and no police to drive to the airport from my home, and probably once you take off, one minute before the airplane's over my house. So, uh, and this is the airport between Spartanburg and Greenville. So, we've got a, uh, we don't have a large number of flights taken off after 9 o'clock. We have a few. And then it kind of dies down in, 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 in for this airport. So, uh, that, oh, that'll peter out and I'll have not to worry about it. But uh, calibration files take it out anyway. It's just, uh, it's just what it is. So I really don't worry that much about it. It is a problem, though, if uh, you don't use calibration files. Uh, the weather stinks. It's 67 degrees, which is as cool as it's going to get. But this is the big number right here. 99% relative humidity and a dew point right at the temperature. And when the dew point and the temperature are close, then water starts to form outside. And right now, both dew heaters are not at max but they're working pretty hard uh, so that's one kit and let me go oh, see if the other kits turned on Saturn's still in our field of view that's a good thing I guess we're still guiding uh, do not die. we gotta turn on the other dew heater let's see we're on A and B and so let's turn on B Set it. Come on. Or is it A and C? There it goes. Um, A is the main, this would be the uh, Smith Castle grain, and B is the guide scope. Uh, there's dew straps around both. Uh, but again, we got, uh, we got a little variation in the dew point here. Uh, usually they're right on. They're, they're almost within a margin of error of a degree or two. So uh, uh, one of the one of the uh, sensors that I have is closer to the dew strap than the other one, and that kind of has it's it's far enough away, but uh, heat travels on a Smith grass Smith Cassie grain uh, body. And it has a little bit to do with heating up the temperature, making it differ. Uh, but when the temperature and the dew point intersect, then count on water. Uh, you walk out to the telescopes, you cross your yard, and you'll get wet uh, walking in the grass. And uh, anything you've got outside will have water forming on it. And... Uh, They'll go that way all night long. And that's part of the living in the South. So, 
Okay, uh, let's do, while we're here, let's, uh, we got Saturn up here. Let's knock off about, uh, oh, 5,000 frames, and we're going to do it. Oh, I'm guiding. Let's uh, get rid of that. Stop guiding. Okay, and we're going to knock off 5,000 frames, and it's on its way. And let's go over to the other one while we're doing that. And it shows that they've already intersected. I do know already I've been outside. Uh, I do know that we're about to get wet. It's almost like rain. There's so much of it. But the dew straps, they get definitely, definitely uh, manage the moisture on your telescope. It just isn't any, not on your glass. So um, I don't know how you could image without it in the south. You couldn't. You're going to get all watered up. Um, but look at these stars and uh, stretch this a little more. Check these stars out. Let's zoom up a little bit. Isn't that cool? I got a half flux radius of 1.19. That's just, uh, we can go ahead and put those outside camera to sleep. But that's just so good. Hope it lasts all night long. I got a nice mean here of 1777, so I'm getting good signal. Uh, I'm happy with that. And let's go back and fit the screen. Sequence Generator Pro is a is a it it looks like it has it would have a a learning curve would be pretty difficult to overcome, but I'm, I'm, it is really, really so intuitive and easy to learn. Uh, I've used astrophotography tool, um, backyard EOS for Nikon specifically when I shot Nikon. And when I first started doing this, I just used Nikon cameras. In fact, my handle or my name was Nikon shooter. And I was on Astro Bin as Nikon shooter for a long time and just changed it uh, when I started the Night, Ki Night Sky Imaging website about three years ago, I think. And so, do do da do, I'm Night Sky Imager on Astro Bin. And I have a website called Night Sky Imaging, one word, dot com. And I need to update it. But, um,. Just got my images up and uh, we'll look at our sequence it's just so easy to uh, to accomplish everything you can um, let's say I wanted to um, add a target let's say I wanted to add Andromeda uh, tonight to image I'm not but let's say I did I could go up to tools and come down to framing in mosaic and I could type in M31 uh, you could probably probably get by with just typing in Andromeda if you happen to have let's say I imaged uh, well I imaged LBN 581 uh, two nights ago so I could just click image and pull in that image and it'll plate solve and I'll be looking at the same um, image that I looked at. I'm looking at right now. But let's uh, use it, uh, M31, M31 Andromeda, and let's fetch it. We'll pay attention to it. Just if you get that, if you're a, if you're a user of Sequence Generator Pro, uh, and you get that, can't find it or whatever message it is, just keep hitting fetch. It'll come up. It's already found it, and uh, there it is. And so I've entered in my profile my uh, field of view. My uh, This is my scale, 2.31. Uh, I use a overlap of 20% in case I want to do a mosaic. Uh, you can do that on this. You can set up your mosaic very easily. Uh, my The ASI 1600 camera has the uh, pixel dynamics of uh, dimensions of 4656 by 3520 so it knows all of that 
So when I draw my box, I just make a little X, it fills it in. And that's what I get. Uh, that's the field of view I have. And if I wanted to create a sequence, I would just go bingo. And I've got a name for it. It wants to know if I want to append, which means do I want to add this to my exi existing target or do I want to replace it? I want to add it. And when I when it starts after the other one ends, do I want to slew and center? Yep. I don't have a rotator, so I'm going to unclick that and I click OK. And it says very good. So now I have M31, and I can click on that, and I can set that up, and I can make it, say if I was going to shoot L, red, green, and blue, and this, this changes the filter. I have a filter wheel over here, and right now it's on HA. This changes the filter right here. That's the... You enter your filter information under your profile. And so, uh, but this, the reason why you enter it twice, this is for the naming of your image. So my images will be named with a, uh, a B in it, a G or, or a L, and I know it's red, green, blue, or luminance. And let's say I was going to take uh, 30, this is what I did the other day. 45 second RGB and 45 second and I was going to do 50, 50, 50, 50 and it tells me I have an hour and 40 minutes worth of imaging time not counting dithering, not counting uh, focus time between filters and between two I focus every two degree temperature change and I focus after every filter and I focus at the beginning of an imaging session. So that takes time. And uh, if I have three hours of imaging time, I add an hour for all of that. So that's four hours. If I have two hours, I add 45 minutes. If I have one hour, I add 30 minutes to 40 minutes. Uh, one hour, actually, I never imaged for one hour. Um, I can't even imagine. Um, if I can't image a target for at least three hours, I'm going to find another target. Um, can't get enough data uh, unless one it's one of those low hanging fruits that just it never gets above like 18 degrees and you know where I'm located just doesn't let me ever get a I mean it's just low and it crosses the meridian and you you know about two hours it's up and that's it where you're getting it's just too low after that you hit rooftops well, when that happens, you, you just have to deal with it. If you want to try to image it, you just work with whatever time you have. Now, another thing I really like about Sequence Generator Pro, I'm going to click on this wheel, and I can come down here to Planning Tools. By the way, this is where you slew to your target and you plates off. And uh, if I wanted to enter an image from Astrobin, all I do is populate. I go to I click here. I go on Astrobin, I find an image I'd like to, you know, I'd like to do it, do the same image myself. I copy the URL from uh, Astrobin. I hit this, I paste it, it populates it, and it takes me to the exact same place the guy on Astrobin was when he imaged. So, pretty cool. Um, but I can go to Planning Tools. And for M31, uh, right now, it's at at this point it's at 40 degrees I'll start imaging at 40 and I've got each one of these represents an hour so I've got one hour two hours three hours four hours five hours six hours uh, six and a half hours then it shows light it's gonna start the sky is gonna start lighting up about right here but I like to stop it about probably right there so um, that tells me how much time I have a sky time. I'm going to have a flip right here. And it tells me my transit time is 243. And this is set up in a way where it flips for you. It's perfect. I mean, it's I don't have any problems flipping. It flips. It's, it uh, slews and recenters for you. You go to bed. Right after you get your images set up, you can just go to bed. And that's not worry about it. So it's great stuff. Anyway... Uh, you put your observatory information in it 
and uh, and it's just your art. It's just where uh, your GPS info and elevation and that sort of thing tells me where I am with the moon and uh, when it's going to rise, when it's going to set. And so uh, I'll by 12 a.m. I'm pretty much unaffected by the moon. Um, by 1:30, it's starting to throw light all over everywhere, and uh, so it's what it is. Close that out. Close that out. If uh, I bought a new telescope and or had a new mount or I got a new camera, I'd create a new profile. And you create a profile by coming up here to Tools, and it says Equipment Profile Manager. And I'd create the new profile. I would just give it a name, type it in, and then I would start with Camera. And I'd have to enter. Uh, let me just click on what I'm using today. I'm using a 1600 camera. Uh, SV70T with the 80 reducer and Atlas Pro mount. So these are the different combinations I have for telescopes and they are not all in there because I've got uh, some other cameras. But that, that's what I'm basically using right now. Uh, so it'll populate uh, you don't have to enter angle. It will automatically find it when you start imaging. There's my image scale, uh, my readout noise. It's telling me what it is, by the way. I put in 1.2 because that's what ZWO says the 1600 is. It figures it out, puts it in there for me. So it in 1.2, obviously. There's my uh, pixel width and height. Uh, I don't ever put anything here. Uh, I'm not going to click on settings because this camera is active right now and it sometimes throws me off but if you do this then you can set your gain and your offset and so then you put on your filters and the same thing here you, you click here and then you I think I can let me see here I think I can do this I may have to start this all over again uh, so this is my filter wheel uh, no this isn't what I want to do uh, here's where you set your filters. And so in slot one, I have loom. Slot two, I have red. You can also calculate your offsets. If you know, these are the exposure times when I'm doing an autofocus. Um, I take an eight seconds exposure to focus with the loom. And then uh, uh, da, 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 over here, and you can put your offsets in, which means that if you know for sure that it's a 20 step difference between your red and your green, then you can go ahead and make that adjustment and you don't have to focus between filter changes. It will automatically just move at 20 steps. Uh, do, 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 do. And then under focus, this is where uh, there's a little, this gets a little tricky. But uh, this is where you set your, uh, uh, well, I said I did every, I don't know, that should have been set, autofocus auto after every two degree temperature change, autofocus on filter change, autofocus auto before sequence starts, and that's all I pick. With this particular camera, um, I'm, when I'm focusing, I use two by two, and I use half flux radius to focus. Uh, I have a step size of 80 and autofocus points of 90 and, 10. and this you kind of have to figure out yourself but um, it's not hard to do uh, I have a video that I've done it's one of the earlier ones I did on how to do this and also I crop by 5% uh, because a lot of my stars towards the edge aren't real round and I don't want to use those to calculate focus so I only use, uh, I eliminate those by just cropping into my frame by 5%. And if you notice that you have some oblong stars at the perimeter uh, around your, either in the corners, then go ahead and just uh, add a, maybe a, a 10 or 15% crop. And it'll only use those stars to calculate focus. When it does autofocus, it'll only use those stars that are inside that. So... 
da 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 I da 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 I don't understand this. Uh, this I like to do the flip 10 minutes past the meridian. Uh, and I don't have wait for meridian either. 10 minutes past. I'm glad I did this because uh, I did not know that I was going to flip at the meridian. Here's the problem. If you flip at the meridian, it's immediately going to try to auto center and plates off and if you're right smack dab on the meridian it might try to nudge it in the direction of the meridian and not move because it ain't gonna go past the meridian the other way uh, it's only gonna move uh, west of the meridian not east of the meridian so you want to wait till it clears the meridian at least by 10 minutes and then it'll plates off and they're in the telescope out there that's going to bang into the mount by just going 10 minutes. So I always have a 10 minute past the meridian. I don't know if that makes any sense or not. Just do that if you're using this software. And uh, this is too, uh, this got also, I don't know what's happened. 10 seconds is plenty to uh, uh, to have an auto close, auto close delay after the flip. You don't need to wait 30 seconds. And then auto center after meridian, it automatically does that. Centers on the target and starts imaging again. Uh, da, da, nudge high speed to nudge our telescopes. There's the focal length 336. Uh, I settle for 15 seconds after um, the mount sinks. And my aperture on this telescope is it's, a, it's the SV70T. Uh, I'm not going to click on this on the mount. I'm, I'm kind of hesitant to. You have to. You just pick your mount. You, there's nothing to do on settings. Under plate solve, you pick whatever you use. I use pinpoint, plate solve 2, and, and uh, ASTAP, ASTAP. Uh, I use astronomy net to blind, saw, uh, to blind solve. So down here it says use blind solve uh, failover. So, and I and plate solve using the loom. Why plate solve with an HA filter it's going to restrict light so if all you're doing is uh, finding your target in the sky by adjusting your telescope make it easy on your telescope to see the stars and use the loom filter or clear a uh, clear filter um, and if you're going to use a color filter don't use the blue it lets in less light use the red or the green green's good green or red unless you have a loom then use loom uh, when I'm plate solving, I had I take a 10 second exposure that gives me time to get plenty of stars in the picture, so it can identify where it is. I want it to try five times before it gives up and uses the blind side failover. Now, if the blind the geez, the blind saw just read it blind solve failover, uh, it goes online, so you need to have the internet. If you wanted to download all of the uh, astrometric files, it uses a lot, then you don't have to go on the internet. You can just download those catalogs, but man, they take up a lot of hard drive spots. But, so I just use go on the internet and it will uh, plate solve using astronomy net on the plate on the internet. Uh, I want to I want to try five times till I'm within 50 pixels of of the center where I was on before and uh, don't pay any attention to this I don't have a rotator and then auto guide I use PhD 2 the settings uh, I just go over and well it's just changed everything I'll use um, I gotta go look and see which one I'm using uh, and I'm gonna do that right now I'm going to go to PhD. I'm going to bring up the brain. No, I'm not either. i got to use, to find that out, I've got to sh stop guiding. So I'm going to stop guiding. I'm going to go to, uh, I'm going to stop guiding. I'm going to go here. I'm using Starlight. My profile is 522 Starlight Express 
Atlas Vixen. All right, let's start guiding again. And now we're guiding. You notice I'm guiding at one second. And my RMS has gone up to 71. We're still pretty close. That's okay. By the way, when you see a dither and it bumps your RA, because I only dither in RA, I don't dither in deck. Deck's got so much backlash, you don't want to start and stop that. Uh, so I dither in RA only. That's all you need to do, and I choose random. Uh, and you you can find that in um, PhD2. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Remind me to do that. So the profile I'm going to select is the, I already forgot, here it is. So that's, I'm going to refresh, and that's the profile. So it automatically finds that profile. And if you want to see what your guiding looks like, uh, open and connect gear. I don't want to do that, but I want to disconnect when the sequence is done. This whole thing's changed. Am I using the right one? Oh, no, crap. <laughs> it's all right. This is this is the one. Uh, yeah, I want to save it. This is the one that, okay, this is the right one right here. I thought I was having to change a bunch of stuff. So, um, all right. And then this is where I set my dither. Let me just cancel out of that. All right. Okay, we can go back to uh, why didn't it open it up? My box. It did it already open up? No, it isn't. Error assessing filter wheel. Oh, crap. What have I done? Let's go back up here. Uh, and why are we? Let's just pause and abort this sequence because we're not using a filter and let me see let me bury this to see how long this has been going on so I got HA there this has got HA and that looks okay alright now uh, let's find the HA filter and let's set that did I lose my filter wheel Nope. So I'll turn that on. All right, set HA. Okay, I'm on HA now. Good. All right, let's uh, resume the sequence. I don't know what happened that that got knocked off. Uh, well, other sequence generator pro users, just see if, if you see what I did wrong, let me know. If I, in fact, I'm not even looking at comments if there are any. So what I'm going to do is run over. Good, there aren't any. Um, I'm coming back, guys. Okay, let's see. <laughs> we better take a look and see if we ever finished that 5,000 frame. Ah, it's moved. And that's, you know, I'm not I am not guiding, so I've had some drift. I expect that. So we want to go... Nope, I thought we wanted to go that way. And south. Nope. Let's get off at two times sidereal to one time sidereal. How about that? We won't go so far. Now we want to go west. Now let's go. Now let's go west. Alright, let's knock off another 5,000. So let's go up here. All I got to do is hit quick capture and it's automatically going to do it. Yeah, let's go back to uh, this uh, software program. Uh, you can choose what you want to populate with your interface. Your uh, graphic user interface is your choice. You can go up here and, uh, well, you can go up here. And these are all the tools that you can use and that you can bring down here. Uh, I like my image statistics. I'm always interested in knowing what my half flux radius is. I'm also interested in knowing what my mean is. Um, that tells me a lot about my signal. And then I can click on PHD2 and see my guiding. 
uh, I usually tuck that tape. This is my frame and focus. If I'm uh, manually trying to do this for some reason, and I'm not, this is my telescope control. Uh, although I like to use this hand controller, which is, you see me using it, uh, this uh, EQ mod hand controller, I prefer using that, but I could use this to nudge, park, and and uh, move them out around. And I like that open, uh, but I'll keep it usually on PhD2. And this way I don't have to go back and forth to PhD2. And if I see huge spikes here, I know something's going on. Cables are hanging. Wind is blowing. Scene is bad. And uh, so I can go to my cameras outside and see if there's anything obvious. And then I have to get myself off my butt. And walk out there and see what's going on uh, this is where you uh, connect to your camera I mean your camera and you set the cooling and, um, and this is the focus position if you click here it'll run an automatic focus and uh, it does an outstanding job it's a great focus program in the software and this is the filter wheel this is the environment it tells me what the temperature is out there and it keeps you from having to click back here and look what's going on with uh, not that I could do anything about it uh, other than it's just information I have access to uh, not much has changed here since we last looked at it it does tell you though how many amps you're drawing and right now um, hmm Uh, these are name drawn and I can change this. This has to be uh, This has to be the camera I can just tell from the uh, From the amperage and this is the mount The focuser isn't focusing so it's not doing anything and I don't have my flat panel hooked up. So that's not it uh, so this has to be the uh, mount and so then this will be the focuser. Uh, part of the reason why this is all messed up is because this is the one of the this is the second night the second night I've been able to image since I set my telescopes back up. I took them down during the early parts of June. The weather got so bloody bad that. Uh, and it looked like we were going to have many clear sky nights. So I decided to bring the scopes in, paint them out, paint the piers, sand and paint the piers, and bring the telescopes in and tear them down and grease. And uh, I put new ceramic bearings on the AVX and just worked on those and cleaned them up. Because they stay out year round. And then I took them back out. And so I had to uh, plug things back in. And so they're not in the same ports on the uh, Pegasus Ultimate Power Box version 2 and so that's why this was all messed up but this is right now the cameras pulling more amps to cool and the mounts using very very little to nudge and the focuser isn't working at all so but it tells you that uh, you know I've got total power of 25 watts and I'm not even pulling uh, G 1.2 amps so, not bad. Very good. I have four hours and 51 minutes left on this target. And if you look at the planning tools, I've got one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours, six hours. Well, almost seven hours to do that in. So, I'll get that in tonight if the clouds stay away. And. I definitely want to get rid of this because when it stops, I do not want to go do Andromeda. I've taken a mess of it, so I'm going to go up here and, and uh, I'm just going to check this. And I can... Uh, oh, you can't do it while it's... You can't do it while you're imaging. I could stop imaging. Let's see, how much longer do we have on this one image? Do, 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 do. We got 163 seconds. I'm looking down here. I could pause it 
at the end of this and delete it but I'm just as long as you uncheck it it's not going to image but if you got two or three targets you want to image one night you can check them all off and it'll go from one to the other plate solve next one plate solve next one plate solve and um, you can go to bed and wake up knowing that if you have clear skies and unless a, a cat a raccoon a rabbit or something gets in your mouth and messes things up uh, you get a cable snag then uh, you'll get what you set up. This software just delivers. It's outstanding. Can't say enough good things about it. And I know there's other good software out there, but I am uh, i don't think you could pry this away from me now with a crowbar. Okay, let's go back out and see what's happened. We haven't drifted too far. We did get our... Uh, oh, look at the scene. Man, it's bad. It isn't good. Let's see, we aren't guiding, are we? Nope. Clear. Let's go back to Jupiter and um, check that out and see what's going on. So let's bring up Cartez, do seal or whatever it is. And let's just go to Jupiter, bingo. And let's slew there. And we're off. There is the mount. I'm a terrible coffee drinker. And I drink a pot from the time I eat dinner till I go to bed. And it's not decaffeinated. Yes, I know. That's not smart. It's not to stay awake, it's just I love coffee. I'm not a drinker of any other beverage that's, I don't like, I've never had an alcoholic beverage that I can honestly say I liked with one exception. Uh, when I coached, uh, our football team played for a state championship in Northern Florida at Quincy Shanks High School. We stayed in the Holiday Inn on the top floor. Uh, there was a, at downtown Tallahassee, and drove 50 miles to uh, Quincy to play that game. At that time, I, that was a long time ago when I coached in the late 60s, early 70s. And when I coached, uh, you went to the team with the best record, and you play, you didn't play in a neutral stadium; you played at their place. Anyway, we were at the Holiday Inn. And after the kids, we knew the kids were in bed, or we thought the kids were in bed. Coaches went upstairs to the very top floor, and they had a restaurant that oversaw the, and a bar that oversaw the city. And and they were all drinking beer and whatever else they liked. And I was drinking my Diet Coke, even back then. What the, what was that drink? Right, uh, Diet, uh, Diet Right, Diet Right Cola. And they didn't have it. And so uh, I had a cherry, I can remember that almost like a uh, cherry coat, and they were making fun of me. And one of the coaches, I won't say his name, but he said, uh, uh, Ed, I'm going to have him fix you a drink you're really going to like. And I said, go for it. So they brought this thing over. It looked like milk. And I'm not a milk drinker, never have been. So I didn't even want to taste it. And it had something like milk in it but i couldn't it didn't taste like milk and it was delicious uh white russian was the name of it and i said this is good give me another one <laughs> you know the rest of the story uh but you can guess it pretty well i was sick as a dog the next day during that game i had to make in warm-ups i had to make uh two trips and it was a long walk to the visitor's locker room. It was an old concrete block house and it had all oh, terrible facilities. They didn't even have seats on the potties. Oh man, that was not a good time. And that, you know, that's just, it was a great drink, but it didn't treat me right. So that was the end of the, Mer of the uh, White Russians. Well, I love coffee. Now you know my life story, guys. Okay, we're going to go see now. I got so sidetracked. 
I'm bad about that. Let's go over to, uh, well, we don't need that. We need to go over to uh, finder scope. We need to start looping again and hope Jupiter's somewhere in here. There it is, and there's the moons. And so we got to bring up or bring over our hand controller. And let's see, I already forgot which way I want to go. West goes up. I'm going to have to change this now to two. It's going to go slow. All right, here we go. West goes up. Bing, bum, bum. Oh, we're doing this every three seconds. Uh, let's make it a half a second and go faster. Uh, it's come down some. Uh, all right. Uh, now that ought to put us in the ballpark. There we go. Now, uh, let's get off of two and get down to one. And because this is so much brighter, let's drop the gain down to about 250. And... That's good. All right, let's go west again. And south. One more. Nudge west a little more. Okay, let's knock off 5,000 of Jupiter. Let's change the name. Jupiter, and let's do a quick capture and do 5,000 of Jupiter. By the way, it's not green. I wonder what bear... I, I'm using the RGGB. Uh, that's what this camera is, RGGB. But uh, you can change this when you're not imaging and you can set it up to auto or if you know your bear matrix and mine happens to be rggb i think i changed that because i know what it is and it's going to go slow at 20 frames per second so we haven't even done a thousand but the power of auto stacker will fix all of this and when you post will derotate it i doubt i'll get it well i may I'm not going to stay live much longer, but uh, in order to have Windjupost post work for you, you need to take, I need to run the gain up and take some faster exposures and take about six or seven of these in a row real quick, uh, as quick as I can, and then stack them and let Windjupost post derotate them and you'll get a better, you'll get a better Saturn. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to waste my time because the scene's not all that good. I don't have very good bands. I don't have very good anything right now. I'm just doing it because I can. And I'll play around with whatever ever I'm able to kit capture. But I'm not look I don't really think it's gonna be remarkable. Okay, well let's go back one more time and before I sign off with you guys and let's look and see if we are still getting some good data and we are the, our guiding looks like it might be acting up a little bit uh it's not a flat line and that's usually what i get i'll look real quick yeah we've had some bumps we're at 92. and that's not a dither we really don't have we didn't have any wind that's sometimes the culprit but we're still reasonably close on our RA and deck values. So let's look at our, uh, let's see where we are imaging wise. We've got, I don't want M31. Uh, we still have uh, 14 more to take HA before we go to O3. There won't be much O3 in this. Uh, I'll show you what, uh, I don't know if this is, let's go to, I uh, don't want to go to 
on my Facebook page. Let's uh, hold on. let's go. Let's just type in LBN five eighty one. Let's see what it brings up. Yeah, here it is. There's LBN 581. That's what we're imaging. And it's just a lot of uh, hydrogen alpha. So, and it's very bright. That's why I'm at 180 seconds. I'm at F4.9 with the uh, oh, F4. Point, I don't know what I am. Let me uh, figure it out real quick. I am at 6.5 times point eight uh is that right i'm at 5.2 f 5.2 oh that's not that fast uh is that right no let's see point five times point five two I don't know, I don't know. It is right. Oh. So I'm at F5 too. Uh, I thought it was faster than that. So we're going to go back to this and check our most recent image. Do a medium stretch. Guidings figure level down leveled off my mean staying right on signal still fairly decent by the time the sun comes up though this is going to go up i mean not the sun the moon where did i get sun yeah it will really go up when the sun goes up so boom, 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 boom. Well, enough of live. I'll be back tomorrow night. I'll have a different target uh, for the uh, narrow band. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but it'll be a different target. And I'll probably start catching some. Uh, I want to rotate my camera. I may change. I may put the 224 back on outside. And I probably will. And uh, I can get, I can increase the frame rate on that but I, I can do for planetary it works great if I can if I don't have any uh, problems with it but uh, I changed cables I did everything and it still acted up when I isolated the problem so it, it may be the camera has some issues but uh, folks I'm gonna catch you later I hope everybody has clear skies in their neck of the woods that are as good as mine and uh, and if you do, I hope you get the images you're looking for. Uh, signing off, this is Ed Overstreet with the Night Sky Imager. If you're so inclined, like, subscribe, and there's a bell somewhere in there to ring. You know, I've never found the bell. Of course, I never look very hard, but uh, there's supposed to be one. And I'm not sure exactly what the bell does other than tell you I'm doing this again. Is that, is that what I think it does? That's what I hear other people say whose videos I watch. I'm just guessing uh, that they know what they're doing because I don't.